I've got a relatively recent addition to the first beer product line to take a look at today. This is the Asset Combat shirt. It's a flame resistant shirt. Uh, it's quite interesting in that it's a little bit different materials wise to pretty much 99% of the other stuff out there. Now I'm gonna have to use the uh, little cheat sheet on the inside here because I've got, got to be honest, I can't memorize the materials list. So we've got mod acrylic, cotton rayon, para aramid, and then a little bit of spandex thrown into the mixture there. I believe that's the torso fabric. I think the sleeves are different because the sleeves are made up of a Kevlar based para aramid. Um, then the torso is a Polatec flame resistant. Then on the underarms here, you've got a separate section, which is a, a high sweat wicking fabric, a mesh. The underarms are where you're gonna sweat the most. So it's pretty crucial to, to get the sweat coming out there. Construction wise, they've put a lot of effort into this. You can see there's a lot of man hours that the sewing machine goes into making one of these. So it certainly justifies the price tag, I have to say. Even with a Cry G3 shirt, what you basically get is two slabs of fabric front and back and then join down the sides and that's it. With this, They've put, they've put in the time, you got your flat lock stitch seams up here, and then you've got extra panels to, to sort of cut and tailor it so it's gonna fit the body just better all around, basically. Then again, you've got that sweat wicking panel specifically under the arms. Now, I don't think this panel part just here is flame resistant. I think you've basically got no melt, no drip, um, rather than the fully FR like you have on the sleeves and the body of the torso. However, once it's worn, that panel is just going to be under here covered away. So if you had that flash flame incident, that panel is pretty much going to be covered up. Other elements of the cut, you've got a pretty decent sized collar on there. So you can tuck in this, like a flame resistant balaclava or a necky, something like that, to create the whole uh, protective package for yourself. And then a fairly long, generous cut in the torso. So you can tuck that in. And it's going to stay tucked in when you're running around. You're going to have this thing where your t-shirt comes untucked on you as you're moving. Nice little piece of the FR fabric to cover up and just contain the top of the zip there. YKK zip, unlike Cry, who just leave the little metal tab. So you've, oh, you've got this tiny little metal thing to grab onto. You've got a cord and then a textured plastic pull, nice and easy to use. Hyperlon garage at the bottom that covers up the metal clamp at the bottom of the zip. I'm not sure why that is because usually you have garages at the top of a zip. I, my only guess is it's covering that metal piece because in the event of a flash uh, fire, anything metal is gonna obviously be superheated straight away and potentially more, do you more harm. Uh, that's the only guess I've got as to why that, that garage is there. Very small detail, but as you tend to find with first beer equipment, they really, they really deep dive into these tiny little nitpicky things. Um, even when it's not even a massive deal, they'll sort it out anyway. Really nice flat, seams as I mentioned and that's throughout the entire thing. This shirt is going to be under a, an armor vest, some sort of plate carrier, whatever you're using, so you're not going to get hot spots and friction spots where the seams are. Velcro wise you don't have a massive amount, you've got small and this is the very low profile low pill stuff uh, in terms of the loop. You've got IFF little area here, very low profile small patch this is a lot different to what you generally find on a combat shirt pocket sleeve personally i would have preferred maybe a little more area but i'd guess i would say they're possibly going for a very law enforcement low profile military user with this so we're not talking about a lot of patches we're talking maybe like an iff ir little square sort of thing and a small unit patch potentially I'd have preferred maybe a full loop square instead of this cutout, just to give the patch a bit more security. Also with the small um, loop areas, if the patch overhangs, then what will happen is the patch, like if something gets under the patch and gets caught as you're moving, it can like take, take the patch off. It depends what you're using really. Usually with first bit kit, they've got a specific end user in mind. So that's probably why they've done it the way they've done it. Pretty generous size arm pocket, similar to a G3 shirt in terms of sizing, it's pretty much the same effect. Low profile, low pill loop again. They've actually gone to the effort of cutting, rather than just a rectangle pocket, they've cut this corner off and put more seams and there's a drainage grommet in there. So that that bottom corner that's furthest from your hand as you try to access it, rather than coming to a corner, 
and then say, you, I don't know, you've got a small compass, whatever the hell you've got, and it ends up falling right into that join in, in the, where the fabric meets in the corner of the pocket, and then you can never get to the thing. So to cut that flat, it's gonna be a lot more feasible when you've got something on your arm, some piece of equipment, to actually get into there and retrieve it and fish it out of the pocket. There's no facility for adding an elbow pad because you can't get into this pocket here, but there's a double layer of fabric, so there's this extra oval piece that's sewn on, nicely shaped and tailored. So you've got a double layering of fabric on there. My experience personally on range days and stuff is that if I put an elbow pad into a pocket, it just ends up never sitting quite right when you're shooting in the prone and stuff like that. So I'm fine with that. I think that's a perfectly good end solution. You've got a Hypalon cuff tab on here, laser cut, low profile loop again, so you can cinch that down to however tight you want it. Nothing much to show you on the back. Um, got a pretty subdued first bit logo on the back of the collar. You can see the extra stitch work they've done on here. Again, that, those extra side panels just to tailor the cut, make it fit the body better, less bulk of fabric underneath your plate carrier getting all bunched up. Now the fabric itself is pretty interesting. I'm going to show you a little bit of a close-up here on the camera, specifically, <clears throat> specifically on the inside. Hopefully that shows Got this grid pattern to the fabric. It's pretty interesting. Now, generally, flame-resistant gear tends to be a bit thicker fabric, a bit, uh, a bit heavier weight, and it tends to feel less breathable. I was a little bit unsure how this thing would perform when you actually sweated in it and really moved around. Now I've kept, I've had hold of it for a while now. I originally got it back around Christmas time. It was in the winter. I tried it in the cold uh, and it did just fine. Obviously you, with, with a layer underneath, plate carrier on top, not a problem in cold weather. But I kept hold of it for a while before I did this review because I wanted to make sure I really ran around and really sweated in this because the torso fabric particularly feels a little bit thicker than your average combat shirt does. Luckily, it performed very well, wicks the sweat away pretty quickly, pretty efficiently, especially considering it was in black and you know I, I was wearing it on a real bright sunny day, about 30 degrees, 30 plus, so getting into about 90 freedoms for those of you across the pond. And yeah, very happy with the performance for a flame resistant garment, it's very good. The sleeves in particular are, are surprisingly quite thin. They're, they're, They've let a lot of light through them when you look through the fabric, uh, but they are high resistance in terms of abrasion. They're holding up well so far, so no complaints in terms of that. Your stitch per inch count is very high throughout the entire garment. You've got bar tacks all over the place on the corners of the pockets, wherever it's needed, reinforcement, very nicely done. Everything's extremely neat, precise, and done to a very high standard as you'd expect. Pricing is about $210, $15 at the time of filming this video, so not cheap. However, that's actually, comparatively speaking, a really pretty good price for a fully flame-resistant combat shirt made in the USA. I've seen stuff from like TrueSpec that was FR that costed as much um, and wasn't made as well and was imported. You know, your, your average Nyko uh, G3 or Gen 2 combat shirt from Cry it just gives you no melt, no drip. Same with the new Arcteryx Assault AR combat shirt. You don't get full FR. It won't melt to you like cheaper stuff will, but it also won't resist flame either. This, you've got that full flame resistance, Kevlar, Paraaramid, all the very expensive high quality fabrics. And if you have a serious use for a sort of kit like this, it's a very good option. So again, not cheap. This isn't what you want to buy just for the range, just for sport usage, but for serious use, highly recommend it. At the moment, you've just got plain black and coyote brown, but obviously that should cover pretty much most situations. I don't think this fabric comes in anything else is the issue. This is a pretty unique proprietary fabric that I haven't seen anywhere else. This uh, was originally an NFM Garm out of Norway and then first we brought it in, started making them in the US. So yeah, you can only get this fabric in a couple of colors. I would imagine that's gonna cover most end users. Any questions at all you have guys, please put them down in the comments. I will get back to you. If you've got any order queries, stuff like that, order 
<clears throat> email first beer. Their customer service is second to none in my experience. They're absolutely brilliant. They will get back to you in no time at all and sort out whatever queries you have. I'll link obviously down in the description to where you can pick up one of these shirts. Thank you for watching. Social media links down in the description below. If you want to see more gear reviews like this, hit subscribe. Cheers.